what are the factors that would suggest that you as an individual are more likely to have a faster disease course or a slower disease course? In this video, I'm going to be discussing just that, prognostic factors in multiple sclerosis. So don't turn away because that starts right now. Hey. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I wanted to discuss with you multiple sclerosis prognostic risk factors. Things about a given individual person which might predispose that person to have a more aggressive or faster disease course, or alternatively, features that might suggest the opposite, that they're less likely to have an aggressive disease course. It's really important stuff as we start to lay out the playing field of MS to set up expectations for what may be coming down the pipeline and most importantly, how aggressive we feel we need to be in trying to tackle this nasty disease. So with that in mind, let's jump in. Let's start reviewing demographics. Women have a slower disease course than men on average in the setting of MS. Interestingly, a woman is three times more likely to develop multiple sclerosis. But if you have multiple sclerosis, being a gentleman is an independent risk factor for a more aggressive disease course. Now, just because you're a guy doesn't mean you're doomed with MS. I'm talking about groups of people. So a group of gentlemen will have a faster disease course than a group of ladies. But as we're trying to game out your MS, this is a factor we consider. Similarly, ethnicity matters. In a group of people, Caucasians tend to have a slower disease course as compared to African Americans or Hispanic Americans or Asian Americans. Now that doesn't mean that if you happen to be black that you're doomed to have MS. It simply means that in groups, African Americans tend to have a faster disease course. Age matters, and specifically the age of symptom onset. So when we think back through when the very first symptoms manifested, if you happen to be younger than 40 years of age, that's a good prognostic factor. Conversely, if your initial MS symptoms presented after the age of 40, that's an independent risk factor for more aggressive disease. Now, whereas age, gender, and ethnicity are non-modifiable risk factors, there are modifiable risk factors that I wanna focus on also. For example, vitamin D. Low levels of vitamin D pre-puberty increase a given individual's risk to develop MS. If you already have MS, low levels of vitamin D are a concerning prognostic factor, meaning if you maintain low levels of vitamin D, you risk driving your disease faster. The good news is if you supplement vitamin D and raise that level above 50, it correlates with good outcomes in slowing the disease down. Similarly, we can make comments about tobacco smoke. Exposure to tobacco smoke pre-puberty, whether that be directly smoking, we call that first-hand smoke, or second-hand smoke, because you're in a room with someone smoking, increases the risk for a given individual to develop MS. If you have MS and you're continued to be exposed to tobacco smoke, whether you're smoking or around a bunch of smokers, that can speed up your MS by upwards of 50%. The good news is, if you avoid tobacco smoke, you slow that risk back down. So quitting smoking is a modifiable risk factor for the prognosis of this disease. Real quick before we go on, if you're digging this video, do me a solid and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you like this content and help push it out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. Over the years, a bunch of really smart MS doctors have clarified clinical features of MS which would predispose someone to have a more aggressive disease course than others. Now, some of these we can't modify, but they're still really important to know about, and it informs our conversation about what we expect to have happen and how aggressive we feel we need to be with disease-modifying therapy. For example, if you have an MS, your first MS attack, and it involves your motor functions. That's a worse prognostic long-term feature than if your first attack was only a sensory problem. If your attack involves your spinal cord, that's a worse prognostic feature than if it didn't. If an attack involves the base of the brain, we call that the brain stem or the infratentorium, that's a bad prognostic feature. If you don't fully recover from your first attack, or if your first attack requires steroids or even hospitalization, 
That's a worse prognostic feature than if your first attack was easy breezy cover girl. We can also look at the frequency of your first couple attacks. If you have your first attack and then you don't have a second attack for years, that's a much better prognostic feature than if you have your first attack and then very shortly thereafter, maybe a couple months later, you have a second attack. That short frequency of attacks is an independent risk factor. And so as we take a clinical history, as we're diagnosing someone, we're not just listening for the facts to understand the diagnosis, we're also listening with an ear for prognosis based on what kind of attack they had, how aggressive it was, how easy it was to treat, and how much better they got, and how frequently they're having those early attacks. All of that stuff matters. When considering the different kinds of MS, relapsing forms of MS, and progressive forms of MS, Presenting with primary progressive MS is a worse prognostic factor than presenting with relapsing MS. Again, important to keep in mind as we game out living your best life despite having MS. Another consideration related to prognosis is comorbidities. So comorbidities is the doctor word for what other stuff do you have going on? What other medical ailments are present? And it turns out that if you have cardiovascular risk factors, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, morbid obesity. These are things that will impact the MS and risk driving the MS faster. Now controlling these cardiovascular risk factors, we believe can help slow that down. And so that becomes another important element. Another concerning comorbid risk factor is depression. Turns out that untreated depression drives MS faster and most people impacted by MS are at high risk of depression. So identifying it and addressing it, I feel is a very, very important concern. We additionally can learn a bunch about prognosis by looking at the early MRIs. If an individual is presenting with uh, MS symptoms and getting worked up and that first MRI has a bunch of MS lesions, that's a worse prognostic factor than if they only had one or two. Now that may sound obvious, but it's an important thing to identify. Also, where the lesions are located and how they respond to contrast also plays into prognosis. If you have a bunch of lesions at the base of the brain, or if you have lesions in your spinal cord, that is a worse prognostic finding than if you don't. If you have a significant number of enhancing lesions after we give you the contrast dye, the gadolinium, that is a worse prognostic factor. Also, the early behavior of the MRI in the first couple years is an important prognostic factor. If you have quiet MRIs over the first year or two, that's way better prognostically than if your MRI is very active. So if we get the second and third MRI and there's lots of new spots, that's very concerning. So we could use this information about the MRI to factor into our prognostic thoughts. So what, Aaron? I list all these risk factors. Some you can modify, some you can't. So what? Well, the first answer to so what is, if it's a modifiable risk factor, well, golly, let's modify it. And so we want to be able to identify those so that we can work on them to literally slow your disease down. Second of all, it helps inform the risks that we're looking at, and it allows us to have a sense of how serious we need to be thinking about this. Now, that is not to say that if you have no aggressive prognostic factors, well, then we just relax and don't do anything. But on the flip side, if we have lots of concerning prognostic factors, that might drive us to reach for a more aggressive disease modifying therapy early. It might drive us to monitor the disease more frequently. It factors into the conversation. Hands down, the biggest way you can help this YouTube channel is by watching another video. If you'd like to up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.